Squad member Congresswoman Ilhan Omar defending a Minneapolis City Council plan to slash millions from the city's police budget. This is the crime rate in the city surges. Look at that, 90 percent up. Minneapolis police saying that homicides have increased in the last year by that staggering 90 percent. I want to bring in Florida Congressman-elect Byron Donalds, who is a member of the rights version of the squad called the Freedom Force. So you're the first member I think I've heard that I've talked to yet about the Freedom Force or since I've known about it. I think this is a quite an interesting thing. What do you hope to do in contrast to someone like Ilhan Omar, who underperformed Joe Biden in the election? She got 65 percent of the vote in her district, while Biden got 80 percent. And yet she still is talking about defund the police as something that is doable and desirable. Well, first, Dana, thanks for having me on the show. Um, I just want to tell you that what we're planning on doing, what we want to do is, frankly, provide uh, a different message than what the squad does. We want to make sure that America, all of America knows uh, that we stand for freedom, individual liberty. We stand for the Constitution. We support our police. We want to have safe communities. We want to have a thriving economy. We want small business owners to go out there and, fry, and thrive and succeed based upon their merit. And the last thing we want to have happen is people in Washington telling states and localities what to do. There's been far too much of that, and it's time that it stops, and that's what we're about. And, you know, I, I also wonder about this notion that about defund the police, because you're part of this incoming freshman class. House Republicans did so much better than they were projected to do uh, by some of the polls. Uh, do you think that this idea of defund the police actually had a resonance across the country? I absolutely do. You know, Dana, I might represent Southwest Florida uh, going forward in the, in the next Congress, but I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I grew up in the inner city. I'm a poor kid from Brooklyn, New York. And the last thing we need is defunding of the police departments, because it's, it is the poor citizens that, grow, that live in our urban areas. They're the ones that need protection when things go wrong. And if you slash police budgets, all you're doing is slashing response time for when citizens actually need help and they need police to protect and serve. It's the absolute mm -hmm. wrong move. We're seeing that in Minneapolis. Uh, Ilan is wrong. And so, you know, I'm here to stand against that and tell the American people that, no, we need to be supporting our police and making sure they yeah. have the, the necessary funding they need for their communities. The other thing I wanted to ask you about is, uh, as you know, President Obama uh, came out with his book just last week. And one of the things that's in here is he says in his book that the only way to truly guarantee that we didn't have another catastrophic oil spill in the future was to stop drilling entirely. But that wasn't going to happen because at the end of the day, we Americans loved our cheap gas and big cars more than we cared about the environment, except when a complete disaster was staring us in the face. Now, you're from southwest Florida. You know, drilling is a, a big deal there, and it is uh, controversial. And one of the reasons is because people care about the environment, too. Uh, we do care about the environment in southwest Florida and, frankly, in all of Florida. Oh, do we want drilling off of the coast? No, that's something that our state and our community desires. But to stop oil drilling altogether is just flat out wrong. You cannot have a growing economy without an energy framework. And so, you know, President Obama, what he thinks is frankly wrong. It doesn't matter if Americans love big trucks. Um, we love big trucks. We love gasoline. But we also care about the environment, too. And it's that kind of a mentality that the American people are beginning to reject every single year when we have these elections and more and more Republicans, like in 2020, win seats, win state house seats, uh, keep going governorships and increase our numbers in Congress. Okay, Congressman-elect, I have to ask you, are you settling into Washington, D.C.? Like, how does how's it feel being there? I mean, honestly, this place is dead. It's boarded up. Um, it's not in a very good space <laughs> at all. I mean, in my area, we're thriving. We're open for business, and we're managing our way through COVID-19. Uh, what, what's happening here with Mayor Bowser is just completely ridiculous. It's <laughs> sad to see the nation's capital this week, uh, this way, but thankfully that we have vaccines on the way. Uh, hopefully, we'll get back open here. We'll be back to business. Well, we'd love to have you back. Thank you so much. This is Byron Donalds. No. Remember his name. Thank you.